And now, from the bowels of the internet, it's the Hate Fit Podcast. The Hate Fit Podcast is on the air. I'm Yale Chaos. Joining me as always, the indomitable Alpha Omega Sin. I'm really awesome, and I like pancakes. <laughs> the super suave, sainted Magnus. Why, hello. And the impenetrable Razor Fist. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your paragon, your idol, nay, your gleaming metalliverous god, your razor fisted dynamo, Razor Fist. God uh, fucking I, speed. <laughs> I exist for the singular purpose of demolishing the self-important incestuous circle jerk that is the video game media, and I enjoy long walks on the beach and the music of Jimmy Buffett. God fucking speed. Woo. Thank you, Razor Fist. We've got a lot for you today, so let's get started. Welcome to episode three of the Hate Bit Podcast. <laughs> Pancakes. 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 <laughs> All right, guys. All right, first on the agenda, what were we talking about? Pancakes. 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 <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I'm done with pancakes. <laughs> Have you ever you noticed with pancakes, right? The pancakes in the U.S., they're made of dough, and you stick them in the toaster, and they pop up nice and warm. What do we do? We get flour, eggs, milk, stick them in a pan, and then they, we flip them over, and we eat them with lemon and Wow, that is that is a riveting topic you're on there, Saint. I'm oh. happy to say that I've never <laughs> ever put pancakes in a toaster. Yeah, I was gonna say, dude, like here we actually have batter and everything and yeah, toss those bis- fuckers into like a skillet or a fucking frying pan. Yeah, it's it's bisquick time over here in the States. <laughs> to be fair though, we have pancakes that come out of a can. Do you have that? No, we make them out from scratch. Because we're well, then you're uh, a bunch pop. of bastards. You need to get technology on your side. You don't need. Just so you know, uh, uh, we're we're the Hate Bit Podcast. This isn't uh, a Cooking Time podcast or anything like that. <laughs> well, as we many- could be doing a review of Cooking Mama. <laughs> cooking Mama. No, cooking Mama wasn't on, down with fucking mama. pancakes. That crazed eyed bitch. She was fucking down with other shit. Now she's babysitting <laughs> and gardening. And then we're gonna have welfare line Mama and all the other fucking other strenuous activities of how fast can the stylist go across the screen to see how many dicks that she can swallow. <laughs> now it sounds like the Hate Bit Podcast. <laughs> hey yo. Now it sounds like a DS Catherine title to me. I don't know. Ooh. <laughs> that, that's what well, no, there's gotta we gotta push boxes and shit around. So we have to push right. boxes so we can reach the blowjob area. <laughs> <laughs> then get our fucking our load blown into the bitch's fucking throat hole, and then go about our fucking activities. Right. Yes. Back on ooh, track, ooh, I think. Ooh, ooh. All right, first on the chopping block, <laughs> me. The future. The future. The future. Future. Now everybody here on the podcast got a lot to say about the uh, impending, and I say impending in a very, in a very Ominous. foreshadowing, daunting way. The future of game consoles. Now. Oh, Mr. God. Sainted Magnus, you had a lot to say about the codename Orbis or the PlayStation 4. Have at it. It's going to be a piece of shit. Why? Why? Yeah. Why? Where do I start? Right. This rumored lockout of pre-owned games. Right, they said they've lifted it. I don't think they're going to fucking lift it. The whole thing with the PSN, right? Going back to last year, it was fucked back then. Then they had the fucking hack. Now it's still fucked, even now. Credit card details. I dare not even put one fucking digit of my credit card on PlayStation Network. I know. If they, if they do that, then hopefully, you know, they've at least upgraded the security system with a fucking sniper on a bloody top of a you tower. You know, it's not even it's not even the security that worries me about that. What worries me and what should worry everyone else is that it took Sony two weeks to inform their audience that their details had been hacked. Exactly. <laughs> It's like they didn't feel compelled to inform anyone that their information was in the hand of a bunch of profligate hackers. Hey, you got to remember the one thing that they did after the whole entire thing was said and done was then they had that patch, and when you went online, you had to agree that you could not ever sue them for anything yep. that they do, no matter how fucked up it is. <laughs> so if they accidentally, <coughs> and I use that term loosely like a fucking prostitute's crotch, <laughs> if they accidentally 
lost your fucking digits and lost your personal information to said, I don't know, dozens of people that want to go and spend your money without you knowing until you go to take some money out of the ATM, then uh, Sony's not held liable for that. that. That's not something that was their fault. It was your fault because you said, it's okay because I want to go back online. But, you know, the fact that they even had the fucking balls, and I say this balls, I mean plenty of balls, not just two in a fucking sack. I mean, they got plenty, a fucking nice collection on a shelf. A ball pit, a ball pit for yeah, a, a piss-filled ball pit. Of like a Rodney Dangerfield <laughs> ball sack. Yeah, and no. which is fucking large and does not get any respect. Okay, they had yes. the balls to actually fucking say, yeah, you can't fucking sue us if we screw up that bad. Always remember that they did do that. They are the enemy, and fuck them in the mouth. Anyway, go go ahead. Yeah, back, 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 to these, back to these specs that uh, I've been supplied yeah. with. Right. The utter bullshit specs. Let, let's see. This, let's see what they're going to change. Right, they say it's got a quad-core processor. Clocking out oh. at 2.9 gigahertz. Uh. Right. My computer's got <laughs> double that, and it's a fucking dual core. So what's uh -huh. so fucking special? Uh, and right. What the fuck is a quad core whenever they have i7 chips? <laughs> it's just like, yeah. that's kind of silly. Maybe, this, quad maybe the quad core discussion is like bits were back in the 90s. No one knew what the fuck a bit was, and no yeah. one knows what the fuck a quad core is, but it sounds impressive. Well, it sounds, <laughs> it sounds impressive, but basically all it is is fucking... It's one processor times four times another, you know, four times. That's what it is. Just like this, just like the buzzword that is the cell processor, which ultimately it was touted as this massive achievement for the PS3, and ultimately what did it amount to? It amounted to even more headaches for game developers that mm. want to bring games onto their system. Exactly. So. Now they've uh, they've kind of gone down the same route with the fucking graphics card. Uh, they've gone down dedicated instead of shared, like the Xbox. So, oh we're fucked. Uh, basically, it is a HD 7670 that's uh, DirectX enabled, uh, which clocks out at 1 gigahertz with 1 gigahertz of dedicated VR RAM. Oh, my. So, we're fucked. So, well, we still have no RAM. Still no RAM at all. That so, was the basically, it's on par with our phones. Awesome. I know. Yeah. So, basically, you know, I'm, and it's slated for a 2013 release. No. I don't know, guys. No. I have graphing calculators with more RAM than a PS3, <laughs> and if they're not going to address the RAM problem, then they're not going very far here, because RAM is the big thing. RAM, the bigger your RAM is, the bigger your levels can be with fewer loading zones. That's the huge! The, screens, the bigger the screams the ladies let out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, what, one, thing, one thing that I'm wondering is if what they should actually do is... Um, Keep you know, make make the PlayStation Three better, or take the same specs what they got the PlayStation Three, and just tighten it up, make it better. You know, give us like extra USB sockets that we can use instead of having two, because we've got one for our hard drive and one to charge our joypad every five fucking minutes. <laughs> you, it takes you five minutes to charge your joypad. No, no, it's like it dies. Maybe. It just dies every fucking five minutes. I, don't that, like that was the a sexual euphemism. I, I don't like it. I don't like the. Th I don't like using rechargeable joypads. I like to have a fucking cable in it all the time because it just works. Uh, now the internet, the internet thing. It's it's going to be dedicated online all the time. Uh, I don't believe. Yeah, that. what the fuck is that? What could it possibly be doing except spying on you? I know. It, <laughs> it, it, it's just not necessary to keep a console online. You know. What's even worse is they have the PlayStation camera type thing, so it really oh, could God. just watch you. <laughs> oh, God. It's like I like seeing you in your boxers eating pizza rolls and wipe it on the couch. <laughs> that fucking just jerks my Watching crank. reruns of Step by Step. Oh. It, it's already <laughs> creepy with that with that folding at home shit that they used to have that now is, what is it called now? They changed the name to it. I forget what it was called. But, uh, you know, the whole thing where when your PS3... You can you can kind of turn it off, but not really, and it's kind of in a sleep like state and it crunches complex calculations oh, that will help solve world yeah. hunger or male pattern baldness or whatever the fuck. Yeah, I'm so. trying to think what it was called. It was uh, like um protein folding or something stupid. It was protein. folding at home originally, but I, I I don't know what it's called now. But it's Oh yeah, it also hard. polishes uh Polishes old silverware and it'll wreck, uh, fix your wrecked marriage. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm just turning on my PS3 to find out what this Whoa, fucking here's shit the was. Thing. It's going to explode. 
Well, ultimately, at the end of the day, I mean, these are still going to be rumored specs because one of the things that Razor Fist had said well before the fucking podcast is that you got to remember what they were trying to tote as the PS3 specs. And yeah. it, it was basically something that could launch a fucking spaceship yeah. <laughs> across the entire universe and back within a couple seconds. And it doesn't break a fucking sweat. And I'm pretty yeah. sure that it could also solve like all the world's problems with the press yeah. of fucking R1 and R2 at the same time. Yes. Because seriously, guys, if you re remember back to 2005 when we were hearing about the Xbox 360 specs and the PS3 specs and even the Wii specs initially... It was all just like, they can jump over tall buildings in a single bound, faster than a speeding bullet. It's like, no, guys. At the end of the day, it had hardly any RAM at all. It just, it, they uh, they always overstate and underdeliver. All three companies all do. All three. Every always. Company. All three. Yeah. They got to, to <coughs> build height. And just going back to that uh, whole folding at home thing, it's called Life with PlayStation. Uh, it, it, Did Louis it, Anderson come up with that? Li or what? Life with PlayStation. Life with Louis. Life with well, this, this, is what, this is what the little description says. Life with PlayStation life provides a dynamic web-based content organized with, into unique channels that, <laughs> <laughs> that can be browsed by time and location while you browse any channel. Dude, Your PS3 you system can contribute to Stanford University's folding at home distributed computer network. Now that right there, I don't know guys, am I the only one picturing in my head, in the back of my mind, like leave it to beaver music? <laughs> or like, <laughs> you know, like that that shopping sweepstakes music, like do 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 do. I imagine sainted in a really nice brown leisure suit, and he's on an <laughs> infomercial just talking this up, and like they, you know, he eventually you he gotta have pipe. like the bitch who has her fucking hands over it, like turning it ever so slightly so everybody can see it, and they're like, and if you buy it now, you know what? No, we'll lower the price. No, it's only three payments of nineteen ninety five. Yes. <laughs> no, funny, no. Picture everyone's funny. picturing me working on a shopping channel. That's fantastic, dude. If you get a brown leisure <laughs> suit, working in a please, library. Please do that. I, I, you got to get a brown leisure suit now because of this. I've got to find a brown leisure suit, right? <laughs> so, do we believe any of this? You'd be, I mean, I, you'd be I calling me Leisure Suit Magnus. <laughs> 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 yeah. hey, anyway, yeah. So the Orbis. What a fucking name. Why call it the fucking Orbis? What ha what's wrong with PlayStation 4? Well, you know it's not going to be called that. That's it's just, just a code name. name. Yeah, but, you know, people are going to call it the Orbis. Like, Dude, what? they're going to call it the PS4 because if they call it anything outside of the PS4, nobody will even know what the fuck it is. Yeah, I yeah. mean, <laughs> it's the same thing with, like, I still call the Wii the Revolution because Wii is a retarded name. I, I got. I'm probably the only one who does that. Uh, but. Actually, I thought Wii was a good name because when you're having fun, you refer to yourself as other people. Wii. <laughs> so I thought that was like a really ballsy statement by Nintendo. I'm like, are they trying to suggest their console is the epitome of a good time? Who, who remembers? Yes. Who remembers yeah. the concept name for the actual Wii It was called the Wii Wand and. The Wii, the Wii Wand. And me, me and my mates were just fucking laughing our asses off at that. I was like, oh, we're going to be running around town saying, I've touched you in my Wii Wand. And we're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's really going to fucking work. <laughs> now what I need you to do is waggle your Wii Wand. Hey, exactly. You, you could see what fucking jokes came from that. You got to yeah. waggle it with three other friends in the room, too. Oh, One of yeah. which is a chick, and it just makes it more awkward. <laughs> a circle waggle, as it were. A circle. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. A Nintendo fan with a chick in the room? Surely you jest. Oh. <laughs> so how is Club Nintendo this week? Uh, Nintendo. Things are well. Vodka's still spelled with five letters, I'm happy to announce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let, let, let's move on a bit. What, what's... Now, mind you, I can't back that up. I, I went to public school. Oh. oh. I know, I know. Uh, anyway. Anyway, moving on. Uh, let me see. Consumerist Magazine has given uh, EA, Electronic Arts, the golden poo for 2012, claiming them to be the worst company in America, beating out Bank of America, as well as Sony, Apple, Walmart, PayPal, Comcast, and GameStop. What do you think of that, fellas? Wow. Yay. That says something because in a, this is the same year where everyone lost their personal information on the PSN and yeah. couldn't access PSN for like a month and a half or however the fuck Six long weeks that was. It was. 
Yeah, like a month and a half. So yeah, I mean that's that's saying something right there. To say you're really worse than Bank of America essentially means that you're worse than every single child predator out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True, but to be fair, this is just one magazine's opinion, and I don't know how reputable the consumer well, here, is. Here's yet. the thing: it's it's not just one magazine's opinion. It's two hundred and fifty thousand people who voted. Within yeah, this entire thing, so we have two hundred and fifty thousand people that think Electronic Arts is worse than Bank of America. While I, I can definitely uh, say that Electronic Arts has done tons of dick things, you know, like the online pass, which uh, none of us can ever forget. But the fact is that are they worse than Bank of Fucking America and GameStop? Oh my God, no! They're I mean, they're Bank not worse America. than them. Bank of America was foreclosing on people illegally. I don't think EA would... Well, actually, you know what? They might foreclose on people illegally. <laughs> if, they, if they thought it'd sell a few more million copies of Madden. <laughs> they might. Will EA that get a finance. Couple more copies of Madden out there? I think we'll do it. Uh, yeah. But, ju but just keep sticking... EA finance. It's in the bag. Just sticking with EA, though. Um, I, I was just scrolling through uh, the most reputable uh, of game news sites, IGN. <laughs> 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 and many lols were had yes and many many lols were had until I found this article and anti-gay campaigns target EA uh, EA is the target of an anti-gay letter writing campaign the company has received several thousand letters objecting to the inclusion of same sex relations in recent games that is they all came from Mrs. funny that is and, funny. And in yeah, recent the games, thing. they mean Mass Effect. Mass Effect. And only Mass thing. Effect. Dragon Age it's 2. All because, it's all because Fox News covered the Mass Effect romance thing, and now the Mass Effect romance thing is a gay Mass Effect romance thing. And here's the thing. They keep putting these love scenes in the games because Fox News covers it, and they know that's several billion more copies, or million more copies sold, not billion. But that that's several more copies that they're going to sell. So... It's kind of EA. EA only has themselves to blame in a way because they're going for the headlines. Well, congratulations, EA. Thing now you've got publicity. the fucking headlines. You know, basically. Well, Careful what you wish for, EA. Yeah, but not forgetting that, you know, one of the uh, relationships you could have in Mass Effect 3 from what I've seen, was, which actually made me laugh, you could actually have Femship get off with Jessica Choba. Yeah. <laughs> I've got Here's a conspiracy the theory. I think the consumerist is run by Fox News. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that. Well, IGN, IGN is owned by News Corp, which owns Fox News. Yep. So. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Follow which... the breadcrumb trail. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is funny, because, okay, News Corp owns Fox News. Fox News covered Mass Effect unfavorably, but News Corp also owns IGN, which cast one of their journalists as one of the characters in Mass Effect. My head just fucking exploded. Yes. Yeah, and the 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 other game that's also <laughs> been divide and conquer. The other game that's <laughs> been slammed for this uh, same sex relationships in games is uh, also the nice new Star Wars: The Old Republic MMO. Mm-hmm. Huh? But I'm sure just that another go on another Bioware game, oh. just another Bioware game going for the headlines. Oh yeah. yeah. yeah the, the, Look, I want to live in a world where I can have Jedi on Jedi action, and I should not be denied of it. I don't care if they have 14 tits or three cocks. Everybody should be able to bump uglies and use the Force. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's true. And I when know. I say use the Force, no, I mean I think, that a lot I, of different I, I, I ways. don't think that's true at all. <laughs> Wait, are you trying to say there are not anything in fucking the U Star Wars universe with 14 tits and three cocks? No, I just don't think that everything should be able to bump uglies. <laughs> so you're uh, saying that you don't want to see like some other monster fuck job of the hut? I don't I know. I mean, if you think about it, if everyone can use the force, would that make rape more prevalent, or would that eliminate rape? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, guys. Stew on that. Pretty, this is getting pretty <laughs> existential for a discussion about Mass Effect lesbian romances, especially considering you can engage in said romances in your second conversation with these characters. Oh, yeah. And there's no <laughs> other podcast on the internet that talks about these things like us. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can only come here for your in-depth analysis of Chewbacca on Chewbacca action. <laughs> Anywhere else and we know you stole it. Yes. <laughs>
But uh, so, uh, so wait, can we copyright Chewbacca on Chewbacca action? I think we should. I <laughs> yes, we can. We I think. Well, I think we'd have to own Chewbacca first. Damn it. Yeah. And we know George Lucas ain't going for that. No, he he has a rubber fist ready and lubed. Yeah. Him and his one. massive gullet chin thing. <laughs> many many chins. Where he hides Whoever he bought his wig from probably sold him the same one he stuck on his face. No, he's he, got a Vince McMahon wig, is what he's got. No, what, what it is, it's uh, what was left of the Chewbacca suits from the 1970s. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, anyway. Okay, Moving continuing on, on fellas. <laughs> yeah, chaos. I don't know, man. The, the, I'm still stuck on the Vince McMahon well, wig thing. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we don't care. We don't care for Vince McMahon. This year's WrestleMania sucked ball, so let's move on. Oh God. Well, if you, we could have moved on had you not brought it up, but now Razor Fist has something stewing in the back of his brain, and he's going <laughs> to unleash it on all of these fine folks that came to listen to us. Oh God. What on on WrestleMania? Oh, Are you going to choke it back? Are you going to choke it back, Razor Fist? I will choke it back. I, I don't choke it back. Choke it back. We don't need that. We might need some vitriol later. We'll get back to you in just a little while. But anyway, it's it's come to that time in the program. In our first hour, we're gonna do some listener mail. Magnus, do we have any listener mail for this week or for this hour? We, we do. We do. We do. We do. We do. We do. Then lay it on me. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake! Give me a chance to find it. You know, with the fact that the word choke it back and then lay it on me has been yeah. thrown about like very close within senses, yeah. I'm starting to think that we probably have the most sexually active podcast ever. Yeah. No. Yeah, I don't Are you talking about Bob Crane? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, emails. Emails. <laughs> Everyone's going to Google right now. Who the hell is Bob Crane? Yeah. Yeah, Bob oh, Crane. I know what Bob the fuck? We'll, we'll, put, we'll put a picture of him somewhere. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Right, this is from a fellow listener called Kyle Boo, and he was based, he, he did... Boo, dude! Boo, dude, yes. And uh, he was on about a lot of the Project Rainfall games, so we kind of dumbed it down to the point where we can actually answer it. Uh, so, basically, <laughs> basically, he was asking, what do you think fan movements such as the Operation Rainfall uh, debacle, whatever... <laughs> Uh, do you think these actually work, and what do we see foresee happening with the Nintendo localization in the future? Um, I think the next few years, as far as Nintendo is concerned, is going to be a lot of if they don't hear from it, they're not going to honor it. No. You're going to need to basically come to their front door with a baseball bat and demand things. Yep. We, we should just threaten to kill the cats. What? That's not what? right. That's then terrible. how would they make I'll, chop suey? I'll never do that. <laughs> I know. I mean, and sorry, you can't they don't make chop suey in Japan, do they? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, fellas. I, I, I think Nintendo will continue to be fucking oblivious no matter what the fans do. Cause th and this has always been my problem with kind of Japanese game developers in general. We're going to be talking a little bit about JRPGs a little later, but there's always been this kind of insular mentality in Japanese gaming development where it's like, we're just going to make the games and you're going to shut up and like it. And it doesn't really matter if you talk to us. Capcom definitely exemplifies this mentality. Definitely. And uh, Square Enix up until recently has definitely exemplified this mentality. So <coughs> it's just kind of like, a, hey, we're going to do what we want, and if you want to buy it, then buy it. And if not, uh, we're going to force you to buy it. <laughs> we're going to yeah. show up at your house in a windowless van and abduct <laughs> you and force you to buy it. Give us your debit card now! <laughs> yes! We will! Don't hurt me, please! Then you just see some guy walking around with a copy of, like, Mass Effect 4 sticking out of his ass. You will be playing this. Yeah. Speaking of which, at some point we need to talk about that DLC ending for Mass oh. Effect 3. Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> Save that for hour two, would you? Yes. Oh, anyway, what else does he say, Sean? Uh, basically, he was a he was asking a that was all he was asking. Oh, and also he says thanks, guys. Keep up the kickass podcast. Sincerely, Kyle Boo. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. Glad to, Kyle. Well, we'll be doing it for at least another hour. Yes. <laughs> another kickass hour. Yes. Before another eight. kickass hour. Let, let's go. Anyway, any, anything else in the mailbox? Uh, we've got another one, but that's. Uh... Are we going to save that for the next hour? We'll save that for the next hour, but I'm going to jump onto Facebook because 
If you guys remember, I did ask people to put things up on Facebook regarding what games would they like to see on the 3DS. You know, we the... Is that for our weekly poll? For our weekly poll. We'll do another weekly poll in the second hour, but this is uh, just to recap because we're gonna, we've got quite a good response, actually. Mm. Uh, let's see. Let's see what ones would be relevant. Uh, right, we've got a lot of people saying the Mother series of games, but we know that's never going to fucking happen. Uh, somebody said Dr. Mario, which I agree. Now, this one made me laugh. Um, somebody put, they should put Action 52 on the Virtual Console. Not Jeez. the pack version <laughs> either. <laughs> oh, uh, Action 52? Action I'm pretty 52. sure that will seriously end up voiding the warranty on your system if you have it on there. <laughs> yeah, because you'll intentionally throw something. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, I think they'll license. just corrupt the entire console. Like the entire thing shuts down. It doesn't power on again, and it catches fire if you try. <laughs> will, there'll be sprites just melting out of the screen. Oh, yeah. little cheetah men falling out of the fucking disc drive. <laughs> no, they, they get the stuck added. on the top screen of your DS. <laughs> yeah. It'll have the added benefit of finally answering the age-old question of how do you acquire rights for a game that nobody wants the rights for? <laughs> <laughs> They wouldn't be able to find the rights because somebody just threw them out somewhere. A bidding war that ends is still under a dollar. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right, somebody said um, one which was Devil's World on the Famicom. Dude, that, I that, fucking agree. Who said that? Uh, somebody called Max Keo. All right, Max, you're fucking awesome for saying that because Devil World is... Oh my god, dude. I've, I've wanted to see that game... Like over on US shores, it never made its way. I've been trying to get a hold of a PAL copy of it. Very good oh. game. If nobody's ever heard of it, just download a ROM of it because, you know, fuck it. It's a ROM and it's free. You, you better but, um, it's, it's more or less Nintendo Pac Man. Yeah, go for, yeah go it's, for the, it's really not a bad game. Go for the Famicom version because you've got, you haven't got all the religious censoring in it. That's very true. Uh, also, somebody said uh, they should put Killer Instinct Gold on the DS. Now, it'd they- be fun. The, to be honest, in my opinion, I think they should actually do a whole new Killer Instinct game for the for the 3DS. They should. Well, I don't think they could because Rare is uh, first party Microsoft now. Well, well here's so. the thing. Um, we also got to remember that uh, Rare did Donkey Kong Country, and they still got to do Donkey Kong Country Returns, and they also got to do the Diddy Kong games on uh, Game Boy Advance <laughs> or DS. Yeah, or whatever. But, but that's different because that's a Nintendo property. That's Donkey Kong. Mm. If uh, with Killer Instinct, I think Killer Instinct is just flat out a rare property because they invented it. I think it so. Is. I, if any, if any future Killer Instinct game were to come out, and I really hope it does, because I love that fucking game. Uh, yes. It would have to be on 360, I guess. See, the, the thing is, I actually stuff. thought Nintendo had some kind of stake in it. I mean, I could be wrong because I, I wouldn't no, be surprised if I mean, Rare it, it owned a hundred percent rights to it. It appeared on Sega, so I guess it couldn't have... Or did it appear on Sega? I can't even remember. Uh, no, I don't think uh, Killer Instinct appeared on Sega, but if it did, somebody please leave uh, a comment in the doodad yeah, down let, below. Yeah, let me let know, because I'm, I'm blanking. I know it was, it was obviously on arcades and shit, mm. but... No, it was a it was a um, rare intellectual property, only released on arcade, Super NES, and Game Boy. No, oh, goes. okay. Yeah, so I guess maybe maybe Nintendo has a little bit of a stake in it. I have no idea. Yeah, uh, somebody else put a new Goemon game. Up. I mean, uh, bottom line is that fans want. Hmm. What fans want? It... Hello. Hello, Alpha. Oh no, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> you <were> seriously, <laughs> seriously like broke up real bad on my end. He was yeah, playing he... possum. Yes. He cut out there. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry, ladies Funny and gentlemen, enough. we appear to be having technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah. so, Meaning, technically, we had a difficulty. Yes. <laughs> so the last... Uh, okay, now I hear you guys really well. Sorry about that. I don't know why, but everything went slow motion with talking, and then, um, yeah, now it's back. Hopefully you can just cut all this bullshit out. <laughs> yeah, Yeah. hopefully. So one of the and guys doing said... doing it again. What? Fucking hell. What? One of the Facebook guys said a uh, new Gamon game? Yep, no, or new Goemon game. I, I don't know how you fucking pronounce it. I've never played it. Love, I love Mystical Ninja, and that would be freaking rad. That would be I awesome. love those games. Uh, let's Myst- see. Well, we'll s- we can read out another one. Uh, 
Divine Edwards has said, since I'm into bullet hell shooters right now, uh, I would like to see a remake of the Twin B game. Anime cut scenes and all. You're going to like that, Razor Fist. <laughs> I've never played it, so I can't really judge. Yeah, even it, uh, even a new foray into the series would be great. Yeah, I agree. You know, get some uh, more shooters onto the system, because I'm... Um, what 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 shooters are actually on the 3DS at the moment? From what uh, the Cave Story, Dream Trigger, Cave Story, and then there was an Kid Icarus Uprising in its own special way. In its own special way, which I do actually own now, and it is fucking fantastic. But I just like Yo know, Chaos says. I wish they'd shut the fuck up when you're playing. Yeah, you know you're taking all of the steam out of my next episode of the 3DS Chronicles. I don't know. <laughs> that was the one joke I had written. Fuck you, man. Oh. oh. Uh, another one. We somebody says right. Oh my god. Let's see. Fucking hell. Turek, the two seeds of evil. Oh my god. That is a an FPS that needs to be made for the 3DS. Yeah, I agree because it's another use for yeah. the fucking Circle Pad Pro. Then I've actually found. Great. I've actually got another use for the thing anyway. Inst- yeah. Instead of you, instead of it just being an obligatory piece of plastic shit that you just buy for your Nintendo, I actually use it for Kid Icarus Uprising, and it actually works just as good as the easel that comes with the fucking Kid Icarus. I mean, I mean, guys, Turok, Game On, all these games you guys are recommending, they're great and all, but I think what everybody's really, really clamoring for is a new Daikatana for the 3DS. Am I right? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And we've had we've had a few mentions of Majora's Mask, but I think that's pretty much in the bag anyway because they've made a pretty you know, good time. They have to pull that in at some point. Well, if they're, they're going to do Majora's Mask, there needs to be a new Zelda adventure on this piece of hardware before that happens. Yeah, yeah. I just really, you know, come on. But I'm going to take this time right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share with everybody about my political cause I'm championing of Uh-oh. bringing F Zero X from the Nintendo 64 onto the 3DS. Yes. And I'm not sure what kind of petition I'm going to have to start, but this is going to be a full spread movement. This is going to be bigger than that Coney thing, man. It's going to be great. <laughs> and you people, anyone listening, you need to get with me. Leave a fucking comment. Leave it on the Facebook, whatever. We're going to do something, and we're going to bring this. And I don't even care if they don't bring it, but I want some fucking f representation inside the next few years because this is bullshit. Anyway. Yeah. Right. Magnus? I'm on board with you, brother. Yes. See? But, See, we got a thing going here. Anyway, but uh, I think what the best policy would to be is if we make another Facebook fan page and try and get the whole 100,000 likes on the damn thing, just like Mega Man Legends three. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, and you see how well that worked out. Yeah, well, you see, it's on its way. It's on its way. Just. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's sending it to Capcom, who never fucking listened to anybody. Yeah, but you know, as soon as it gets to like two hundred thousand likes, you know, uh, somebody we know is gonna be like, "Well, you know, if you get to two point one million likes, oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy." Oh. No, but th- that's what's so weird about speaking of Capcom, just ignoring people. It's like it's so weird because if you go to CapcomUnity.com, they have like a more community-oriented website than any I've ever seen, really. And yet they just, they're like, hey, we're going to make all this for you. And then we're going to turn our backs and go do whatever the fuck we want. And ignore you motherfuckers. Yeah, exactly. Right. So We're going to be assholes and you're going to pay us for it. How do you Basically, feel? Basically, there's, there's even a whole section where you can, you can say, this is the game I want you to make. There's literally a suggestion part of the whole Capcom Unity site. And I, I can't count on both hands how many times I've said, new Breath of Fire game, goddammit. And... Everybody ignores it. Yeah, I, I miss Breath of, Breath of Fire. <clears throat> I do too. Mm. I've been dying for a Breath of Fire game for years now. Well, well, it was my first my first RPG, as a matter of fact, was uh, the original Breath of Fire. So. Well, uh, I, won't, I, won't, I won't shit on your f- first RPG then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were planning on doing it up until now? <laughs> no, I could do now though, but I'm not going. I'm not that much of an asshole. <laughs> I find it disturbing that you have plans to shit on random things. You're just yeah. kind of lying and wait to go and just dump your ass on something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's... Who's to say they're random? Random. You're like the AVGN. You got a fecal fixation. <laughs> it might be predetermined, you know. Yeah. It could be going up a list. 
I'm gonna shit on Danny DeVito. I'm gonna. (laughs) (laughs) That doesn't sound like that would be that hard. No. Right. Let's get on with it. Yeah. What what was the uh, other? Did you guys want me to throw one of my stories out there? Yeah. Let's get one of your stories out. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, the uh, Ubisoft came out this past week and has been. They've been disseminating more details about Assassin's Creed 3 as the weeks have gone on. They said. And I'm sure everybody will have a rousing cheer when they hear this, that uh, Assassin's Creed 3 will feature more segments with Desmond than ever. Yeah! So three cheers God. for Captain Personality. Fucking God. <laughs> it, right. You, you, play, you play the sections as hip, Desmond. Hip, hip, you play the sections as Desmond on Assassin's Creed 1. He's got a fucking bedroom to run around in. That's it. You, yep. play him in, you play him on Assassin's Creed 2. He's got a warehouse to run around in. Yeah. You play it in Brotherhood. Yeah. You've got an entire town to play with. That you played with yeah. in the first in the second game. Revelations, yeah. he's trapped inside the Animus. Oh, for fuck's yeah. sake. What are they going to do with him now? Hook him up to life support and have him roll around in a fucking wheelchair or something? They should kill him. Yes, kill him. just kill him. <laughs> I'm so fucking tired of Desmond, it's not even fun. We were tired of Desmond in Assassin's Creed 1, were we not? I was sick of I mean, Desmond in Assassin's Creed 1. I, it was I nice. hoped he'd fucking die. <laughs> it was nice to have some FaceTime with Kristen Bell, because, I mean, it's always nice to have FaceTime with Kristen Bell, let's be real here. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's it was pretty insufferable to be, you know, walking around at the speed of a tectonic fucking plate. Yeah, but then at, then at the end of Assassin's Creed fucking Brotherhood, he kills the fucking only person that had more fucking personality than him. Yeah. Ugh. Insufferable. Do you ever get the idea that people are buying these games just to see Desmond die a bloody mess? Yeah, I have that feeling. Maybe there's gonna be a mini game with just that. If they <laughs> promised that, I would buy my first Assassin's Creed game since yeah. one. Kill Desmond. Would, yeah. <laughs> it has the Blues Brothers music, you know, do 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 That should be the title, as a matter of fact. Assassin's Creed Kill Desmond. Kill Forget this with cliche. a hammer. Forget this cliche <laughs> bullshit with Brotherhood and Revelations, and I'm sure the inevitable Armageddon or some other cliche subtitle. Just kill yeah, Desmond. Armageddon is going to be coming up, I can foresee that. <laughs> or maybe uh, Assassin's Creed Revenge will have that. returns. Well, they, what have they had? They've had Bloodlines, they've had Discovery, they've had Brotherhood, oh. they've had Revelations, they've had two Electric Boogaloo. They're gonna they're gonna have three. <laughs> they've had Lineage. I, I'm I'm wondering when maybe they're gonna run out of have... subtitles for these fucking games. No, because then they're gonna have Let's Dance Ten Assassin's Creed. <laughs> It'll happen. Assassin's Creed Edition. Now, the only cool character that they've ever had in the Assassin's Creed franchise, and that was uh, Altair. Yep, damn right. Altair was such a badass. And then you got fucking, you got this bloody Italian that can't keep his dick in his pants. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's the best way to describe him. You'll have to be more specific. Ezio. Ezio <laughs> Alditore. Oh, fuck. I, I hate Ezio. I flat out hate him. That man's accent did more damage to the Italian people than the fucking Mussolini regime. Yes. That's my opinion. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Have we finished ranting about Assassin's Creed, or do you think we could go off for another ten minutes? <laughs> We get, we I get love talk. the fact that we have the option. Yes, we have we the option. We I think we should blow off for another ten minutes. It's the Hate Bit Podcast. We can do whatever the ever-loving hate, fuck we hate, want. Hate, 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 hate. What? Yep. <laughs> but no, Mass. So what about uh, Mass Effect Three, the DLC ending? Bah. Yeah. Bah. <laughs> Why can't people just be satisfied with with the way somebody's ended a fucking story, right? Well, I, I if... imagine if Mary Shelley had this option to just you know send somebody a different ending. Yeah, I don't know, guys. Y- usually, when a story has a bad ending, they just call it a bad story and move the fuck on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what I did. Well, <laughs> the, the ending in Mass Effect Three, right? I've heard all the fucking spiel with it. I've had a lot. I know a lot of people that have finished it and they're gone. Oh, well, the ending wasn't that bad. It was closure to the. St- they just well, It was just basically, you know, three endings. You got a choice of what to do, and then boom, that was it. Because it, at the end of the day, it was a trilogy for Shepard. That was it. 
That's yeah. all Mass Effect is. It's a trilogy of Shepard trying to save the fucking galaxy. And then we've got fucking inconsiderate gamers who don't give a flying fuck about uh, the ending properly. They're just going, oh yeah, we've played it, we've finished it. Then we've got all these diehards that go, oh, I didn't like that ending. Let's go and bastardise it and just say we need the ending changed. For fuck's sake, the game's been complete for fucking months. No, look, the game does... The, it, here, I'm going to come out definitively and say the ending doesn't need to be changed. No, it doesn't. It, it's a bad ending for a bad game, and that's how it should stay. <laughs> as, a, as a solemn testament to the fact that this game was massively disappointing and just flat out not good. And the best game if in the series. you think about it, it's a great too. ending because it's over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but having, having played Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2 and loved both those games, and then I was going to go out and buy Mass Effect 3, you know, just to complete the story, and then after hearing all this fucking spiel, it, oh, it's a piece of shit, I'm just, I'm not even going to bother. I'm going to wait till it's £10 in the fucking bottom of a bargain bin. That's a good move right there. You know, it's probably worth $10. You know, pretty much. I I can't fucking stand the game, but the ending is like the cherry on top of the turd smoothie, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that turd smoothie doesn't taste very nice at all. I would never well, if you're into that kind of thing. Made it, made it smoothie, right? Well, I ain't German, so... Ooh. 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 <laughs> yeah, you know, in Vietnam, they call them boba. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, let's let's move on from one turd smoothie to another. What's next? Well, next we want to talk about uh, 3D gaming relevance. Is it really necessary for everything to be striving towards 3D gaming in this day and age? Oh, Christ. Right. Where do we start... Well, we can start right here with the goddamn Nintendo 3DS. Right. Uh, One of the main things I hate about the 3DS is the fucking 3D. It's not (laughs) fucking necessary. Right? It slows down the fucking frame rate of the game by probably about three or four frames, so it looks fucking garbage. It it hurts your eyes after fucking 20 fucking seconds of looking at the damn thing. Yeah, it does. You know, if if you've been silly enough to buy a 3D... 3D display for the fucking, t- you know, for your TV, for example. You sat, you sat at home, looking like a prat, playing games that probably shouldn't really need 3D. One example, yeah. Gran Turismo 5. Why did they put 3D in Gran Turismo 5? Yeah, it's just the longer, not You know, the longer the longer it goes on, the more I think the video game industry is aware of the fact that 3D is not the future. Really, it's just, to them, it's just another peripheral that they can sell. That's what it is. Well, let's, you know? let's, let's put it in two words. Virtual boy. Oh, yeah. Virtual boy. That that pretty much says it all right there. But, I mean... Actually, it, if you think about it, that says nothing. The virtual boy was a vain attempt at you know, <laughs> virtual reality, which virtual reality and 3D are absolutely mutually exclusive. Mm. I well, don't yeah, understand why, they, the why they're the used day, so interchangeably. At the end of the day, it was it was a 3D system. Well, sure, it was an attempt know, at a 3D system. Mm-hmm. None of those games really took advantage of the 3D. Like, I mean, look at Mario most Tennis of Mario Tennis did tech- to some degree. It, it, to some degree, but really, most of those games aren't 3D at all. They just look like regular ass games. That you know, it's just like, well, we put more emphasis on the foreground. Well, we put more emphasis on the background. All right, now you can't see for half an hour. That's it. Mm. <laughs> well, it just goes to show that they're not paying attention to anything. 3D yeah. failed to capture audiences in the 50s. It failed to capture audiences in the 70s. It failed in the 80s, and it failed in the 90s. They just tried to call it virtual e- reality, and I think that's where the uh, interchangeability stems from. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. you know, they usually say third time's the charm. This is number six. <laughs> yeah. It just it's keeps not going, going to work. If people want to act like you know, want to feel that they're there, they'll fucking go there. You know, and and really, at the end of the day, we have James Cameron to thank for this bullshit. Yeah, because he's Avatar. like, well, this time it's gonna stay because we found a way to make it really, really high res. And was Avatar at the end of the day all that high res with the three D? No, fucking no, I, absolutely I, I think, not. I think the only thing that I remember that was actually 3D was the fact when fucking Jake Sully gets inside that bloody blue orangutan that he fucking runs around him <laughs> half the fucking film <laughs> is when he's running along he says oh look I've, I'm about 8 feet tall and I can run and then you see gravel coming out of your face that's the only thing I can remember that's 3D in the whole fucking film 
yeah. You know, the one the main. Of... Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, but the, I, I honestly think the main way that 3D is going to be relevant within gaming or really in anything, you know, movies and TV shows, etc., is if it's built from the ground up to take advantage of 3D and it's not just an afterthought tacked on to take advantage of, you know, a bunch of people who think that they're going to get more bang for their buck by seeing it in pseudo 3D. Yeah, and that's really the problem at the end of the day is the stuff that's made from the ground up for 3D is usually desultory fucking garbage like carnival games and, yeah. you know, <laughs> playing Wii Golf and shit like that. Those kind of little mini game kind of family games. Well, I mean, shit. what we ultimately need is like, OK, if we took, you know, we'll take Nintendo for the biggest example because they have a dedicated 3D system, but... Um, if, if Nintendo yeah, goes and says, hey, we are going to make this game right now and it's going to be, you know, the shit and it's going to be built from the ground up. Like, for instance, OK, how about F-Zero? What if the next F-Zero game was built from the ground up to be a 3D racing game and to Pretty really take advantage of the hardware? Then it would probably be good, despite the fact that you're going to have tons of eye strain and everything after yeah. fucking 20 minutes of going around uh, the tracks and everything. But the fact is, if the 3D is done well and done right and done purposefully and not an afterthought, then, you know, it could be cool. It could. Correct. It could. Could. <laughs> could is uh, the, the word that we're going to put in bold face print and have underlined 50 fucking times with neon lights <laughs> pointing at it. Yes. Yeah, could. <laughs> It could, in the same way that Microsoft could make a good first-party game, or maybe a good fucking console. Split out. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, you know, I, there might be a lot of uh, Xbox fanboys that listen to this podcast, and a lot of PlayStation fanboys that listen to this podcast. And you know what, fanboys, fuck off, because I don't really give a shit, right? I don't give a shit that your console's more reliable than mine, or it does this the, o- over this. It's it's just a fucking computer. That you play a game with, get yeah. a fucking grip. They really sound like these faggots who stand in parking lots and talk about how big her, that this engine in this car is a four-barrel carburetor. Who gives a fuck? Well, they do <laughs> because their dicks are extremely small and they need something to brag about, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. That, that's kind of like um, I guess it's kind of like uh, Xbox fanboys. They're the fucking worse. You know, yeah, they, yeah, no, they go, oh, you know, I've got I've got an Xbox 360. Mine is better than yours. You've got a PlayStation. You are bales above. And here's the suck. thing. I can't even say that any fanboy is better than another because all fanboys at the end of the day should be lumped together and lit on fucking fire and thrown off a bridge. You, you know what I think they should do? You know that? You know it's uh, Cape Canaveral. They've got that big Saturn V rocket thing. Yeah. You know what they should do? They should fill that sucker up with um, some... You know, some fucking rocket fuel. Stick every single fucking Xbox fanboy, Nintendo fanboy, fucking PlayStation fanboy, all into this fucking giant pit. You know, they might have to fucking dig it about a couple of miles deep just to throw all them stupid (laughs) fuckheads in there. Stick the rocket on top as like a nice little lid. (laughs) Fire the cunting thing off. Collect all the ashes. At the bottom, you know, the, there's going to be a fair few fucking ashes, and then we'll 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 give them to uh, the I don't know. We'll give it to Bill Gates to snort up his fucking nose because I'm sure he's on. <laughs> yes. I wonder if he snorted Steve Jobs' ashes. Oh. Yes. oh. Like, oh. I win. Oh. <laughs> Poor Steve Jobs. Uh, we have somebody right now commenting, "You motherfucker!" Yo, chaos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Steve Jobs, my dick. And, 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 <laughs> and speaking of... Steve Jobs is the piece of shit that gave us the Bandai Pippin. Fuck him and anybody who looks like him. <laughs> well, well let, uh, let's uh, let's just, uh, you know, since we're on the, uh, you know, the fucking fanboyism sort of bullshit. I thought you were going to say we should talk about the Pippin. I was going to be like, what can we talk about? Well, I know, <laughs> I, I'll i be honest. Steve Jobs I know. is a piece of shit and I'm glad he's dead. <laughs> oh, 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 wow. Oh, that's, that's kind of okay, buddy. But, no, but I'm I'm just I'm on this fucking rant about fucking fun. Don't bail out on me now, goddamn. Well, it. We don't bail out on you. We're fucking <laughs> if you just let me say what I'm trying to say, then we'll get on with it. Please do. Uh... Right. <laughs> Speaking of fucking fanboys, right? These fucking PC fanboys, console fanboys. Uh... That fucking old chestnut of a war, you know, I I'm, I'm in the PC camp and I've got a fucking machine that bakes fucking bread and does this that and the other. Nobody gives a fuck. You know, 
I like consoles because they're cheap and I can play decent games on them. You know, whenever I fucking please and not have to install the fucking thing. Oh, wait, I have a PlayStation 3. Got to install on that. Anyway. I don't really care either way because I have two computers and a gajillion consoles. So that to me is the best gaming experience because I don't miss out on anything and I don't say something's better than the other because every single console has something all one on it. Except for the Bandai Pippin. That has nothing. Yes, that's true. <laughs> all that. The Bandai Pippin has a rubber band wheel and a hamster. And um... That hamster's been dead, man. It's been dead. <laughs> that hamster's been dead for a month. <laughs> well, 20 fucking years, I'd say. Well, since we're having this discussion, I should probably bring up that on the Facebook page, we had a little bit of piece of mail from Elliot Nichols Love, or Bravo Elliot, who asked us to give a quick discussion about PC gaming as he's recently switched from console to PC, and he's really enjoying it, far more than on the console, and he would like to know our views on it. Elliot, I'd just like you to know that if you're listening right now, before the podcast, uh, Sainted Magnus called you a traitor. <laughs> and I would, like to con- I would like the conversation to continue from there. So, for Bravo uh, Elliot, PC uh, gaming can kiss my dick with the exception of uh, Sims. Hey, and fuck. That's fuck. <laughs> no. Okay, guys. Okay. I like PC gaming. As a matter of fact, that's hard. I- at heart, I am a PC gamer because I feel like even when you play the multiplats on PC, they're usually better because you can crank up the graphics on them. Well, because they you started the with PC mods. and then dumped them down for the consoles. Yes. Yeah, you get the you get the nice mods. You get uh, fan and missions. You, you have the choice of you can use a controller or a mouse and keyboard. You're damn right. And, I, you know, sometimes I do either or. Like, I have Silent Hill 2 Director's Cut for uh, PC. And I use a controller on that. I get a USB controller, and it's great. It's freaking fantastic. Now I feel like I'm going to get ganged up on here for saying that statement. And uh, thank you very much, Yell Chaos, for putting me on the yeah, fucking you just, spot. Yeah, you, you just have been you insufferable British twat. I'm no, twat. Twat. <laughs> twat. 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 <laughs> twat. Yeah, there's an, there's an apostrophe You say more posh than I do when you say it like that. But anyway. <laughs> anyway, right. Just... Uh, the whole traitor thing, you know, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to... Don't defend I'm gonna... yourself, goddammit, it's the Hate Bit Podcast and you will be hateful. I command you! Can I fucking elaborate <laughs> on it? <laughs> fucking hell. Do. Fuck yeah. me, Jesus Christ, it's like... The gods have decreed. The sainted one has decreed. Ah. Ah. <laughs> anyway. But on, on the subject of PC gaming, I'll be talking about it a little bit more in the rant section, uh, particularly on the subject of DRM, which I feel is the only major drawback of PC gaming, and it is a yes. major pain in the balls. Right. I'm, I'm just I'm just going on to my little sh- shiting thoughts about PC gaming. The only reason I'm not a PC gamer is because I can't afford a £2,500 fucking gaming rig to play games like Mass Effect, uh... Deus Ex, uh, Halo, fucking Halo 2 and all that shite on there. I, yeah. That's why I buy consoles. So I can go out and buy them because I play all the mul- my multiplats on there. Plus I've got my nice little exclusives every now and again, which isn't all that bad. Now, yeah. I started out on PC, right? I started out on PC. My dad bought a decent fucking machine. I could play Jedi Knight, Thief. I could play... Interstate 76 and 82 on there and have, you know, hours and hours of fun. Then we got the PlayStation in the house and we got uh, got hold of the Sega Saturn. <laughs> Sad memories. But, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think you and me sainted, sainted, I think we fall into the same category. We didn't abandon PC gaming. PC, ban- PC gaming kind of abandoned us because yeah. we just flat out got left in the dust because we couldn't afford it anymore, basically. Yes, exactly. I feel the same way. Now, that's why I said traitor. The thing is, PC gaming has come a long way because of one major thing, and this is, in my opinion, what's kept it alive and running and definitely is keeping it like super relevant, and that's Steam. Yes. If it wasn't oh, yeah. for Steam right now, PC gaming would be ultra fucked. And even if people don't want to admit that, it really is the truth. Steam is oh. like a wonderful, wonderful you product. Know, I can't wait. For Steam, Steam, Steam is in fact just downloadable content. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think it's I think it's Steam and websites like GoodOldGames.com, shit like that. 
Yeah. You, you know, the stuff where you, you have this massive online service where you got a huge library of games, relatively cheap to download them all. You get exclusive shit on Steam. It's great. Oh, most definitely. You know? But there is one thing I do like about Steam, and I'm looking forward to... I hope they do release this Steam box, because I like Steam. You know, I got Steam way back when Half-Life 2 came out, and that was the yeah. last proper game I bought for the PC, was Half-Life 2. And I had to apply for this Steam account. Now, I can see why, because it's instead of it being tied to your machine, like another fucking download service that we know, EA Origins... Fucking cunts. It's actually Ugh. tied to your account, which is it's fantastic news. You know, you can, you know, you log on, you've, you've got all your games there. So if you change hardware, you just re download the game and you pick up where you left off because it saves it directly onto the cloud. Yeah. So that that's that's the good thing about Steam. The bad thing about Steam, it's all downloadable content, and I don't like downloadable it's cloud content. Cloud gaming and the cloud is will not always be there. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's cloud gaming, but it's downloaded cloud, not cloud. Well, yeah, that's... and at the end of the day, when you download something, usually there's something in the in the license agreement that just flat out says you don't own this game. Steam is not one of those services, though. You do technically own the games, and you can if you close I've your read Steam otherwise. account. Otherwise. Well, yeah, it dep- It kind of varies from game to game, but in most cases, you yeah, can okay. download your game and leave Steam, no questions asked. Yeah, exactly. In most well, I was going to buy the Back to the Future game on Steam, and then I saw that in the clause. I'm like, well, then I'm not buying your fucking game. I'll wait for it on the Wii. And yeah. it eventually came out, which I was amazed. Yes. <laughs> not only that, it's coming yeah. out on the PlayStation 3, and it uses the move. Sweet. So, another... For all six of wow. us that own the PlayStation Move. Yes. Yeah. Yay. Even though I'm buying the Wii version, because it, it still looks good. You can go have a great big dildo party. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can waggle your arms all night. Waggle your Wii wands. Come on. Wii wands. Yeah, I, I think we should get... I think we should com- campaign to have the Wii mote changed again to the Wii, Wii wand. <laughs> yes. The Wii Shaft. The Wii Shaft. No, because then it's going to make people who stutter sound like assholes. We won. 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 Yeah, just wait until you got a fucking accent as well. We won. We won. Hey, <laughs> hey if we're, if we're going to do that, why why stop there? Rename the Connect and the Move. Rename Move to, like, the, the PlayStation Sponce or something. Yeah. But I, I always <laughs> like the Natal. I, I always thought Natal sounded good for the X. <laughs> yeah, the Xbox. That had... The PlayStation. Oh, the PlayStation Crank. There you go. <laughs> So we're just going to call, call it the PlayStation Cock. We're, we're, we're going to call, uh, well, I'll call um, my PlayStation to the office block, because that's what it looks like. Uh, uh, <laughs> the Wii, I'll call, well, I don't know, a joke, maybe. Slimline toaster? I'm going to call my Xbox the factory, because it's about the size of a fucking factory block. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking of the original Xbox because it is massive. Oh yeah, I, I was oh. I was uh, tidying up the other day and I picked up that thing and I forgot how heavy it was. And I was like, oh fuck you know. I, I know. Not my, nearly my as much TV as the Philips is, CDI. My TV is lighter than my Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually true. <laughs> the TV I use is fucking lighter than the bloody Xbox. I'm telling you. At least you Did have a ever see the Philips CDI now. machine. Say again. You ever see the Philips CDI machine? Yeah, yeah that, that's like a fucking space station. The fucking city block, man. Dude, it was, it's even <laughs> bigger than the Atari 5200. It was, it, yeah, it dwarfed the Atari 5200. That's no moon. That's a Philips CDI. <laughs> that's no moon. That's a space station. When you bring it into your house and set it on the floor, it changes the gravitational pull of the particular <laughs> area in which you're standing. Oh, God. You will feel your floor warp. <laughs> when yes. you put the Philips CDI on the ground. Oh. A- anyway, <laughs> anyway we'll, 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 moving on. Yeah, what topic are we up to? Because I think we've lost track. Uh, I don't well, right now, know. we're going to talk about the uh, the decline of Japanese role play games in yes. uh, in general. And Razor Fist wants to talk about this. I certainly do. I think we all want to talk about it, quite frankly. Oh, yes. Except the- for Yo Chaos. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I, uh, you know, I don't have as much to say, and I feel well, left out, but I'll chime in as best well, I can. Well, let's get it out of the way, then. What, what have you got to say about it? Well, si- uh, simply... Oh, you mean Yell Chaos? Yeah, oh, Yell Chaos. Well, it- Do it, man. Yeah, come on, get on with it. Take it up, take I, it. I just... Um, uh-huh. I'm uh-huh. sick and tired of that goddamn little blue squitchy thing from, from Dragon Quest. Oh, God. The slime. The slime. You, you, the slime. You, Fuck that. You're going to piss off one of our biggest listeners. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Johnny. <laughs> I have, I have anyway, pixel art of the healing. Spawn, um, you know, actually. I, uh, <coughs> I, I've only played maybe like a dozen or two dozen RPGs in my lifetime, so I'm not really the guy to ask. It's not I just every can't single... stand real time inventory control. But anyway, yeah. Razor Fist, you're the expert. Please have at it. Well, I mean, I got into RPGs via JRPGs, like most people. I mean, shoot, sainted uh, alpha. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I imagine your first RPGs were probably Japanese, right? They like were. Final Fantasy or something. Final Fantasy, Fantasy Star, uh, Breath of Fire, Pokemon. Yeah, all, all good. All no good. No one ever counts Legend of Zelda. What? Well, Legend of Zelda is an adventure game. It's an adventure game, not an RPG. Yeah, I don't know. I still consider uh, Legend of Zelda 2 to be uh, an RPG. The, the mm-hmm. games all have RPG elements in the sense that there's upgrades and shit, but it's not a pure RPG, really. Well, cause, but, yeah. but at the end of the day, I, I like Japanese RPGs, and I wish they were as good as they were in the late 80s or in the early 90s. I think we can all fucking agree on that. Yes. Yes. Wholeheartedly. But sure, over the, why not? I'd <laughs> 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 I'd say, I'd say he did say last, he would chime in. Yes, he did. I'd say over the last uh, console generation, uh, the PS2 era particularly, it was a lot... They, they just got to be a lot of JRPG shovelware. You know, it was like everybody saw the success of Final Fantasy VII, which I did a whole video about, and I'm convinced Final Fantasy VII was the beginning of the end for JRPGs. Everybody tried to, like, mimic Final Fantasy VII. It was like, oh, we can all have an amnesiac, epicene, little emo fanboy, you know, as the main character, and he can have big tittied squad mates and have romances, and that'll just, that'll fill in for actual creative vision. But I, I think, really, the, the ultimate problem was that Japanese game development, <clears throat> number one, Japanese games don't sell as well as they used to, so Japan's influence is greatly reduced. And number two, they just got really insular. Instead of reaching out to the West, they've gotten to the point where there are entire video game studios in Japan that have never released a game in America and never want to and never plan on it. Because it's like, we we know better than you. You don't you wouldn't like our games, blah, 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 blah. And, th- and that's how you end up with situations like with Nintendo. Half of their fucking library for the Wii hasn't been released in America. It's like, there's all these games they just re- they just refuse to bring over here. You know, and a lot of them are already in fucking food. English. Yeah. yeah. A lot of them have English mode already on them. Only because they were released over here first. I think that's it. I think it's just, just fundamentally, they looked at Final Fantasy 7, 8, 10, and they were like, let's do more of that. What happens tonight? And that's how, you, that's how you end up with garbage like Tabula Rasa. Mm-hmm. And, or not Tabula, not Tabula Rasa, Magna Carta. Sorry, I got my Latin phrases mixed up. But Magna Carta, Tabula Rasa wasn't bad, actually. MMO. Somebody, uh, somebody listening to this is shitting their pants because you badmouth Tabula Rasa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tabula Rasa was good, actually. I liked it. But no, Magna Carta is a piece of shit. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I like how happy you said that, too. Like, you were excited to say that. You're like, it, it's such a piece of shit. Like, with a big, really big old is. grin. <laughs> <laughs> and then he had some of his Happy Meal. Yes. <laughs> Speak, but I don't know. Speaking of, surely you guys know what I'm talking about. Yes, about. Yeah. yes, we do. They don't. I mean, the last good JRPG. Can you guys even name the last good JRPG you played? And I mean, in terms of when it was released, recent, um, like pfft. Lost Odyssey for me is like the last one. Lost Odyssey is a fucking absolute. It probably one of the best JRPGs ever. And yeah. I'll actually like say that with a straight face. If somebody argues with me, I'll be like, "Did you play it?" Yeah, because it, it, <laughs> there's no way you could say it's a bad game. It has an amazing fucking story. It, to me, it was honestly, f- to, to me, and anybody can be like, eh, fuck you for saying this. I, a lot of people know I don't like Final Fantasy XIII. Lost Odyssey, to me, is the official Final Fantasy XIII that was not named Final <laughs> Fantasy XIII. You know, it, it really is. It really is. If you pause it, actually just replace it in your mind with Lost yeah. Odyssey. It's like, you can live in a happy land where Final Fantasy is still good. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It, it, it's an amazing game, but this this generation of consoles, we we did get snubbed hardcore with it, and you are right. I mean, the Japanese influence is, like, taking a backseat, but that's mostly in turn because over in Japan and shit, you know, they're, the games aren't selling 
like worth a damn. They only have a couple franchises that they go out of their way to purchase. So you got all these smaller time developers who can't put out the stuff. Dev kits are not cheap by any means. Getting a publisher uh -huh. to jump on board is always risky for them because they're like, can we actually bank off of this? I mean, there's so many fucking variables to throw in. And I, I don't know. It's just... Uh, I really do miss last gen because there was a lot of cool stuff. I, I think most notably like stuff like the Shin Megami series uh, mm -hmm. was really strong last gen. We had Shadow Hearts, which I thought was out of left field and was extremely badass. The Tales games, uh, they were really good. I mean, there's just there's a whole fuck ton. It just kind of sucks that now we don't really have many of that stuff well, I, at all. I like my uh, action RPGs, you know, when you're running around with a sword and beating the fuck out of things. Uh, yeah. I so I'm I've love always loved the Fantasy Star Online series of games. I've always liked the Fantasy Star Universe series of games, which progressed onto the PSP as Fantasy Star Portable. Mm -hmm. But now we've got the Master of Hardness, yeah. which is the uh, Dark Souls and Demon Souls games, and I I fucking love yeah. them. And they are they're supposed to be Western RPGs, but they're made in Japan. So they're kind of they're kind of like yeah. pseudo JRPG really. I'd yeah, say. they're kind of like Japan. They're they're kind of like Japan throwing one of our RPGs back at us. It it reminds me a lot, and I've said it before. It's one of the reasons I don't really care for it. It's very much just a dungeon crawler. There's very little story there at all. Uh, so it's like I agree. It, it's yeah. I mean, there's a story, but it's like really convoluted and it's not very fleshed out. It, it, so but anyway, so what the fuck story really? It's kind of like Diablo. It's like they played a yeah. lot of Diablo, and then they were like, let's kind of do this, but flesh out the combat more. And then, like, we'll, we'll add a whole online competitive component and shit like that. There's some cool ideas, especially with the online. Oh, I well, the thing like. is, with games like that, story and character development all take a backseat, and it's about the adventure and actual experience overall. Mm. Yeah. But I, I, I still don't care for Demon's Souls or, or Dark Souls. Do, that's I, I find Demon's Souls better than Dark Souls, in my opinion. But that's because I've played more of Demon's Souls than I did Dark Souls. Because I just can't get my head into it at the moment. Yeah, I've heard Dark Souls isn't as good as Demon's Souls, but I don't know. Well, you need, you need, <laughs> you need to own a PS3 to really enjoy Demon's Souls. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Well, I've played it on PS3. I just don't. Really. Personally, right now, the only thing I'm waiting for, I'm still waiting for like a Persona Five. Hmm. Well, yeah. that's really about it. I mean, a lot of people, if if you love the series, you know, yay. If you don't love it, uh, that's understandable. But the thing is, Persona Three and Persona Four, as much as I love them, um, I I really do not want to go back to the whole thing of you're a high school student and you're going through school every day because I've had two fucking installments now that have done that for the love of fucking God please take the road that Persona 2 did and make people like adults and yeah. make a really fucked up storyline not to say that the other ones weren't fucked up but I, Persona 2 is still my favorite and I'm just I don't know I really want to see another one because the Persona team a bunch of talented ass motherfuckers, and we really need one on a console, like desperately. Mm. Well, I, I've just recently bought Persona 2 on the PSP, so I'm gonna crack that in and uh, give it a good, good play to find out how how good it actually is. Because I, I hear all so many good things about the series, so it'll be quite interesting to take advantage of uh, getting hold of uh, Persona 2 and actually enjoying it's it. It's really worth getting a hold of, and it, the one thing that shocked some people when I told them this, and this was like quite a few months ago, but um, GameStop was selling uh, Persona 2, the limited collector's edition that comes with the soundtrack and all that. Mm -hmm. They were selling it brand new for $20, and I bought just like shit myself. I was like, are you yeah. serious? Because I still didn't get the game I was supposed to, and I didn't. And I, I ran out and I bought it. Uh, Granted, I'm supporting the devil in doing this, but you know, <laughs> for twenty dollars and everywhere else was still selling it for like forty, I couldn't really argue because, I mean, Shimigami games all have like their little satanic references. So if I'm supporting the devil buying it, I'm still supporting the devil. So it doesn't matter where I get it. It's all right. We're metalheads and gamers, and we're supposed to respect the goat, aren't we, or something? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you know, just that's what Fox News would have you believe, anyway. Oh no, but. Just going back to this whole, um, you know, JRPGs. Another one yeah. I've recently picked up on the PSP was uh, Lord of Arcana, which is kind of, you know, it's an action-ish RPG, which is pretty cool. And 
from what I've played of it at the moment, it's just like you run up and you've got the whole. You see a monster, you go into like a battle mode, you fight them with actual attacks, and then you you get the whole wind animation at the end of it. That's all I found with it at the moment, and that that's another Western sort of JRPG. You know what what game I always loved the battle system on? Actually, there were two games that had like the same battle system, and they were both on N sixty four, which is not known for having good RPGs. <laughs> was uh, <laughs> one one was Quest sixty four, which had a really freaking cool battle system with the circles, and you could run around wherever you wanted in the circle, and if the enemy was in the circle, then you could hit them. Or and then there was like a bigger circle around that, so that if you wanted to run away, you had to like each turn move your circle over further, and then eventually you could just run out. It was really badass. It was it was deep. It was kind of real time. It was turn based, but not really. You had more control. But the the other game that had that battle system, I, I'm blanking on the, the title of it, but it was a more realistic like fantasy RPG that I'm like, something about magic. I, I don't know. But anyways, I always I always liked that. I wish JRPGs would push the limits of the battle systems more, because the shit they're doing in Final Fantasy XIII with the battle system that essentially fucking plays with itself. Yeah, it's, it, old, it's, man. it's auto battle, and you just get to be there and act like you're interacting with it and putting some kind of thought into it. Press A button, win. That's yeah. it. <laughs> Pretty much. You want to know what it. battle system I still love to absolute death and didn't get bored of grinding? was uh, fucking the Star Ocean games. Oh, yeah. The, the Star Ocean games were just, like, insanely, like, ma- well, I mean, it, it also helps that you could level up to, what, level 250, 255, some shit like that. Yeah. And, I mean, running around in those, that was, that was really nice, because, I mean, for the longest time, I was going through turn-based combat after turn-based combat in all the different games I was playing, and then here comes Star Ocean, um, and this was the second story on PS1 whenever I had first experienced it. I was like, holy shit, this is flat out fucking amazing. And I loved it. And then uh, t- was it till the end of time on PS2 was another here you go. Have at it. And that game was just gargantuan in size. Like to do oh. everything in that game, you're easily going to waste like 200 hours of your fucking time. Oh, easily. Yeah. I-, I just remembered what the game was called. I was trying to think of uh, Iden Chronicles, the first mage Ooh. It was a THQ. It was a THQ game from back when THQ Dude, still made I, good games. I saw that the other day, and I had known about that being, um, like, you know, a big RPG on a system. As a matter of fact, it was one of the last games released for the 64. Yeah. And I never yeah. got a hold of it. It's fantastic. And the battle system is very simple, similar to Quest 64. It's like they fleshed it out more. It's really fucking badass. But N64, its poor system, just had no RPGs at all. You know. They had o- Ogre Battle, and they had that. <laughs> uh, I'm, I was waiting for Yell Chaos to pipe up and say, There was Zelda! There was Zelda! <laughs> and the, the thing is, at the end of the day, the thing that's really keeping JRPGs, uh, JRPGs alive, though, honestly, is handhelds. Yes. And that's yeah, really it. Like, if you go, if you if you are an owner of a PSP, which I know most people don't even give a shit it exists, but if you're a fan of RPGs at all, Pick up a PSP because it's like it's got RPGs just running out the ass. Matter of fact, if you're a fan of the Persona games, you should own a, a PSP because it has Persona One, Two, and Three, and they have Four coming out. Um, and then on top of that, just some of the really underlooked games that are on it, like the GND Arc or however you say it, that game's really good. Uh, let's see, they got Wild Arms on there, Popolo Croy, they got. Um, uh, Crisis Core, which I don't know how the hell I even forgot about that. Uh, Crimson Gem Saga, Lunar's actually on yeah. there. Uh, you can import Breath of Fire 3 on PAL, unless you're in the PAL region, then you can just go and buy it, which is a fantastic game and way cheaper than getting it on uh, PS1. It's just... It's a good post oh, the, as well. It really is. Um, Legend that's of the thing, Heroes. Like, that's the thing on 3DS, on DS, uh, on PSP, unfortunately, a lot of those JRPGs are just re-releases. Mm. So it's not like they're moving forward, really, uh, unfortunately, on the JRPG front. It's like they're kind of going back and just like, okay, let's re-release all the Final Fantasy games again. Yeah, well, the, you know. yeah. just just in the I mean, Final Fantasy defense, though, there was uh, Final Fantasy IV, the complete edition, which was a oh, complete true. collection, which gave you the re-release, so you got the first half of the story. Then they gave you the after years, which was basically what happened afterwards. And not only that, there was also the interlude, which was a little bit of gameplay in between the two main stories. So, for 
in terms of content, you got a good, got a lot of bang for your buck, and it was an expansion of the original story. Yeah. I don't know. I honestly liked it a whole mm-hmm. lot. Like that after years, um, I had I gotten it when it was on um, what is it the WiiWare service? I think. Yeah. Yeah. And I I downloaded it originally on there because uh, fi- Final Fantasy IV, which uh, many many gamers out there might refer to it as Final Fantasy II, um, Final Fantasy IV is just an amazing game. Like it really really is in terms of uh, story, characters, uh, graphically looked amazing for its time. Um, music, it you know, it, it's the whole package. But uh, to see something like that and still done in the same style of graphics and everything was like playing an extension in a game you didn't know existed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Somebody got but the speakers off. Yeah. <laughs> so let's get. What are, what are, what's next? You, Sainted might have to take over here because Yell Chaos is having. Well, we're, we're we're well after the uh, first hour, so do we have any mail left? We, do we have some mail? All right, it's all going to be on the Facebook, so let's have a yeah. juicy fucking. All right, job. what's on the Facebook? Well, that's what I'm looking at now. Just give me a minute to upload. All right. We... And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment box or on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash what is it, hate bit podcast? www. Forward, uh, facebook.com forward slash pages forward slash hate bit podcast. Link will be Sweet. link will be in the description below, and there'll also be a link on the channel page probably after this podcast. Damn right. All uh, right. So got, put on your thinking cap and lay it on us. Right. So we have got one from Aaron Bird. One B Y R D. I hope I said it right. And he says he wants to see Smash TV rebooted on the 3DS. Uh, that would actually find finally be usage for the uh, Circle Pad Pro. Yep. Matthew Mapes says he wants Ice Climbers on the 3DS, uh, Donkey Kong 64, Mario 64 revived, you know, to revive the series, and maybe a Dissidia game from the, from the PSP library. Hmm, sounds cool. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not a big Dissidia fan. Uh, I, I don't really, I've not really played them, so I can't really say much. Uh, just... Let's see, have we got any more? I know we've got more, but uh, Facebook is a piece of shit, so... Uh, <laughs> really? Surely you jest. <laughs> uh, no, but we've got a nice comment here. Uh, already loving this podcast. Nothing beats f- uh, listening to four very experienced gamers having a conversation over games. Yeah. And that was left by Ryan Eddy. Ryan Eddie. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you Ryan Eddie. Yes. I like that we're referred to as experience. That makes me think of old MILFs or some shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're mature gamers. We're mature. <laughs> we have so much experience. Yeah. The Gilf Gamer Pod Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> we can remember a time when they made video games. I remember a time when you used to play games on tapes. I know. <laughs> tapes. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. I remember no, I when it used to be pickles. Now it's pulp. I remember a time when you couldn't take your games anywhere near a magnet. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when you had to blow on the cartridge. Do you like green beans? <laughs> All right. <laughs> One more comment. Uh, I think. Uh, well, we got what two comments, but from the same guy. Uh, again, that I. I think needs to be brought onto the 3DS is Super Metroid or Castlevania. And then he also puts Foot Cat Com. <laughs> so, we, that's we, we should actually just <laughs> make a good fucking, comment. Uh, Thumbs up. We should make a top down shooter that's just called Fuck Capcom. And, and it yes. can be all the little employees flying at the screen and a bunch of angry fucking gamers <laughs> shooting shit out of it. Yeah. 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 The reward at the reward. Incorporate that in Smash the end of, Yeah. The, Almost the, definitely. The reward at the end of the game is we all get Mega Man Legends 3 and Breath of Fire 6. That's the reward. Is that all for th- no, that's, that's uh, all for this week's poll. That's all so, for the mail? All right. Well, we, at this juncture, I'd like to take time to uh, plug our individual Facebook pages and our individual channels on YouTube. Links provided in the description box below. Yep. Um, yep. Oh, that's that's all I was going to do. Actually, I thought I was going to whore it out a little bit longer, but that's not the case. You're horny, Moving you're on horny, to so. the rest of our podcast. Don't forget, we got a lot more coming up. Um, let me see. Oh, 
Oh. One of the last few topics I got written down here is we're going to have a discussion about tutorials and accessibility in gaming today. Oh, fuck. Read a manual, you dumb fucks. Well, I, I read an article on the ZeldaDungeon.net, and they picked it from somewhere else, um, talking about how, at least in Zelda games, and I, I think this is pretty clear all the way across uh, gaming these days, is the tutorials are getting longer and talking to you as if you're a fucking moron. And I wonder, is that more because they are fucking morons? Or because they don't know that, you know, we're more than just meat with eyes? We are just more... I don't know. We're just meat with eyes, you know. They, they, oh. game, you know, games companies have been treating us like a bunch of fucking assholes for years, so... It, it... But that's the thing, like, it's so weird. The, the Super Nintendo was a system that primarily sold to young children. I know because I was a fucking young child when I owned one, you know what I mean? Right, mm -hmm. how many young children were you? <laughs> but, like, you play... Uh, for example, I mentioned earlier my first RPG with, was the original Breath of Fire. I didn't have a game manual with that. And that game doesn't have a tutorial at all. Nope. And that game was made for children. It's like, but now I boot up fucking Mass Effect and I got a button prompt on the screen telling me that pushing the left thumbstick moves my character forward. Like, what? Seriously? Uh, it's that's getting because out of they... They don't assume that we're all stupid. They want to make sure that they can get every single asshole living to play the game, even if they never played a game before, because they want little Johnny to be able to pick up the game, and his dad sees it, and his dad decides to pick up the game, even though he doesn't have prior experience with a game console. And then his grandpappy comes down, and he sees, and he's like, oh, I just nudged, okay. And he goes, and he does the same thing because, well, quite frankly, they want to go and grab hold of everybody and shake the money out of them because yeah. that's their <laughs> ultimate goal is cash. We, we aren't meat with eyes. We're cash that breathes. That's, yeah. no, that's, a, that's a better analogy. <laughs> Basically. And, and now they got whole tutorial modes that last the entire game. You literally have a tutorial. Some of these games, have a, you go in the options menu, you actually have to turn off the tutorials in order to <laughs> yes. not be inundated with this bullshit the whole fucking game. Please quit harassing me about how I climb onto a ledge. I don't need to know because it's the same fucking button throughout the entire game. But would you like us to tell you again? No, you ass clown. I don't want to be told again. Quit fucking doing it. It's annoying. Well, you know who programs all this shit, right? Capcom? The paperclip from Windows. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. God I forgot that all about clip. that. <laughs> it's well, would, him all would anybody fall. think I'm out of... Would anybody think I'm out of line by suggesting that a lot of this is artificial content extension? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you, you're right, though. Yeah, I think some of that is definitely... I mean... Because you're, 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 turning, a a, you're, you're turning a 30-hour game into a you know, 40 or 50-hour game just because it's so dramatically slowed down in the very beginning. So it yeah. seems longer. Which is nothing new. I mean, I was playing... I, I've been mentioning to you guys, I've been playing through the Silent Hill games... Ever since I beat Downpour recently, I have been playing through the Silent Hill games, and I played one, right? Which is one of the few PlayStation 1 games that holds the fuck up to this day. It's fantastic. But mm -hmm. I was playing that game, and literally I beat it in all of six hours because I knew the solutions to all the puzzles. With the puzzles, if you didn't know the solutions to the puzzles, that game could take you weeks. <laughs> the only thing I have to say in response to that is the piano puzzle. I was just the, thinking uh, that. <laughs> that. That is literally like, and I'll go on record and say this, anybody, anybody listening to this right now, I fucking challenge you to tell me about a fucking puzzle that is more infuriating than the fucking <laughs> piano puzzle. And I don't just mean now after you've fucking solved it and shit. No, 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 no. I want you to fucking go into the furthest recesses of your fucking memory and remember wanting to punch a baby because you couldn't <laughs> fucking figure it out. And don't tell me, well, I guessed it and figured it out on the first try. You're a liar. You're lying <laughs> to cover up those fucking horrible memories like <laughs> I do periodically when I'm like, I don't want to remember that. Yeah, I totally bested that the first try. Yeah, <laughs> and I break down and cry and have to go on a drinking binge just yeah. to fucking forget. But no, seriously, if anybody can remember something, please comment about it. That would be fucking awesome. That, that, that's I love this week's Facebook horror. thing, I think. It, yeah. yeah don't I myself, I've actually suppressed that memory so hard that all I can think about is the piano from Mario 64 that tries to eat Mario. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, because so much in the Silent Hill puzzles are so fucking unrealistic. Yeah. They're painful. No one would think of this. That's why you had to have three dudes eating Cheetos, getting yeah. it all over the controller, spending a fucking weekend to figure out how to do the fucking piano puzzle. That piano I still remember puzzle. actually having friends down trying to figure that out, and everybody just was like, I don't get it, I don't understand. Turn this off, let's play Jet Moto. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that was pretty much my life right there, as my friends Jet being Moto infuriated. Jet Moto everything, though. It, oh, it, it, it did. didn't, because I kept going with it. I can't quit. I have to best it, or else die trying. Well, yeah. well that piano puzzle, I you see, I, w I was unlucky, right? I... Most of the people that played games in my class when I was at school were basically the ones that fucking played 64. So when I says, oh, what game are you playing at the moment? And I'm saying, oh, I'm playing Silent Hill 1. And they're like, huh? How do, how do you play that? I says, it's survival horror. Oh, like Resident Evil. I says, no, it's better than Resident Evil. Yeah. Got to this piano I, puzzle. I Sorry, I had a bit of gas. Got to the piano <laughs> puzzle. And I says, right, come on, I need a hand. And not one of us could do it. And, yeah. and they, they were more flummoxed by the fucking control because it had two analog sticks and not just the one. <gasps> fucking... To be fair, the, Resi the initial Resident Evil releases are more or less puzzle games that couldn't stand on their own as difficult puzzles. Mm. Yeah, those are not very good puzzles in Resident Evil. Silent Hill puts those bitches to shame. Oh, it no, horribly. The, the Resident Evil heavily relies on ambiance. Yeah, very heavily. Well, so does Silent Hill. I was going to oh, say, uh, Silent Hill... Uh, well, okay, here, you have to look at oh, like this. Silent Hill, it feels like the game itself hates you. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it does hate you, and that's one of the reasons why it's so fucking awesome. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> You're making me want to go and buy the original one okay. on PS1, though. All the ambience in Do fucking it. Resident Evil was done in the first one. The other ones weren't nearly as scary, like, as far as setting... Well, Code Veronica was here and there. Um... But the thing is, like, you know, a, a scary, spooky, fucking quiet mansion in the middle of the woods with nobody else to help you. Yeah, that's a fucked up ass setting. The rest of them, I mean, a, a, you know, a city that's pretty much completely destroyed isn't. I'm going in a completely different direction. We're talking about puzzles. I'm sorry. See how I sidetrack? I can't help it. <laughs> it's all right. We weren't even talking about that. We were talking about games that have too long of tutorials. Oh, yeah. Wow. See? Wow. Well, <laughs> um. Well, here, I, I will definitely say this. Seriously, folks, if you can think of any really fucked up, infuriating puzzles whatsoever, please, please write about it, because, uh, yeah, we would like to reminisce and uh, and then conjure up those bad memories all over again. Yes, put it on, and put it on the Facebook. And please do not include the 1500 jigsaw piece puzzle of a wheat field. <laughs> <laughs> put, put it on the Facebook. We'll read them out on the next, on the next podcast episode. What do you think of that, eh? That will do. Yes, most certainly. Right now, I want to totally steal a Dimitri Martin joke. Oh, God. Here we go. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, no, I just speaking of puzzles, he's talking about one day he's going to put together a 20,000-piece puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle, and when you finish it, it just says, go outside. <laughs> 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 anyway, that brings us to the end of all our news sections, and now it's time, your favorite time, my favorite time, the rant. And for the rant, we go to Mr. Razor Fist. Ah, yes. I've had this one brewing for a while. I actually got a message on YouTube, someone asking me to rant on this subject right as it was brewing, so the, it's lightning in a bottle here, motherfuckers. Ooh. Ooh. Right so, the lightning. <laughs> DRM and anti-piracy measures. <laughs> Beyond the mere fact that it sounds like I don't know, DRM, to me, sounds like an Asian respiratory ailment. It's clearly one of the most, like, controversial aspects of modern PC gaming, a topic that itself is more controversial, I don't know, than a Ted Kennedy dinner date that culminates in the construction of a Ground Zero mosque using Barack Obama's birth certificate as the fucking building permit, and the reasons why are fairly self-evident. All right. The mere act of booting up a Ubisoft PC title since 2007 entails a complex, fucking violative sexual act invariably involving a bent-over, splayed-legged fucking player, two football fields of copper piping, live circus animals, and a trained puppeteer. Being a PC gamer since, oh, about 2001 has often felt depressing and increasingly solitary, but it hasn't been until recently that it felt like trying to smuggle nuclear waste through a TSA checkpoint with a live time bomb wedged in your fucking duodenum. 
you could beat a baby seal and a family of puppies to death in the middle of a PETA rally and feel less resentment <laughs> than by simply taking it upon yourself to boot up a modern PC title. The problem to me is this. Not all PC gamers are pirates, but enough fucking are. And frankly, that isn't the developer's fault. The big man train initially helmed by Napster and then, I guess, Audio Galaxy, Kazaa, BitTorrent, and now piloted by a demented cornucopia of profligate would-be blackbeards, has now had palpable consequences for the average unassuming Joe who just plain wants to play his copy of Rainbow Six Vegas without the need for a gallon of KY and a fucking writing crop. <laughs> My clear stance is this. If illegally downloading PC games immediately disqualified someone from being able to bitch about intrusive and impractical DRM measures, then there would only be three guys left. But those three guys would be really fucking pissed. You don't get a bit... To me, I guess you don't get to bitch about DRM while you're plundering the depths of the Pirate Bay for that day's ration of booty, both figurative and literal, every fucking night. If you steal those games, I fucking hope they're hard to play. I hope the DRM requires a direct connection to the base of your goddamn urethra. You fucking stole the game that a group of 80-plus people labored to make for years, you simpering cunt. Good for Ubisoft. Unfortunately, that isn't how it works. If you're savvy enough to know how to anonymously download a torrent, then muddling through the process of downloading a DRM crack isn't exactly a Herculean effort at that point. It's a measure directed at illegal downloaders that hurts everyone except illegal downloaders. Not to get too political, but it's a bit like gun control. If the mere act of outlawing firearms immediately precluded organized criminals from acquiring guns, then every nation on this planet would be doing it without batting an eyelash. The problem is that the only people who aren't affected by gun control laws are fucking criminals. Because those lowdown motherfuckers weren't buying their guns legally to begin with. If you want to kill illegal downloading, make a product with physical items that no one can download. DLC bonuses get cracked faster than a rebar under Ralphie Mae's love seat, particularly when you're leaving it on the fucking disc, so fuck that noise. But there's, one, there's just one singular item of advice that can single-handedly part the seas and turn back the barbarian hordes. So I need the development community to just come in Real nice and close, all none of you that watch this podcast, especially you, Jade Raymond, come and, come and sit on Daddy's lap, okay? You ready? You clenched? All right. Make games that are worth fucking buying. If you make lobotomized third-person set-piece simulators with more chest-high walls than plot points, you deserve your fucking sales. And piracy only magnifies what would have already been disappointing sales reports at that point. In summation... Developers, stop blaming your audience because you haven't made a game worth purchasing in half a decade. And audience, stop fucking stealing shit. And before you turn into an existentialist cockbag and tell me, but like, who really owns anything, man? First, wash your fucking poncho, you filthy pseudo-iconoclastic fucking hippie. And second, stop hiding behind armchair philosophy to justify your dickbag behavior. Stealing is wrong, fuckhead. I'm Razor Fist, God fucking space. Hey! Yay! I won't even clap. I'm gonna say the word clap, 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 clap. clap, 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 clap that, that was that was damn good. Is that how your medical chart reads? Clap, clap, yes. clap. Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> my whorish ways should should not be revealed because then everybody will have a fucking a, a fuck count as big as mine. Ooh. Moving forward. <laughs> Moving forward. Yes. Yeah, so I'm not gonna judge. I'm a slutty little boy myself. But all that aside, we're talking about video games, which is more about rape than. <laughs> You know, to be honest, this generation is just one big fucking rape case. It really it is. is. The rape chase has begun. No, people go to jail in rape cases. Yeah, well, maybe we should start sending these fuckers to jail. Because look, the, look at what they've done to the customers. You know, we, we should do yeah. a class That's action looking. lawsuit saying that you fuckers have fucked us over for the last time. <laughs> so, DRM, what are you guys' thoughts on DRM? Because I think we now established mine pretty well, well at this point. DRM, right, digital rights media, whatever you want to call it, it's just a it fucking joke. And like you said, you know, I totally agree with you. There is, you know, the fair few fuckheads that like to download a game off fucking ISO hunts and shit like that and fucking say, oh, I've just downloaded the latest game. Do you want it on your PC? No, do I fucking want that thing on my PC? Because it's just... It's going to be a glitchy fucking mess, unlike when you buy the proper version, and it fucking works first time. But, yeah. that's all I can say to it. 
Yeah. Uh, my my big view on it is like this. I understand why people will download games and steal them because, frankly, they're poor. And yeah. I've been in that situation tons and tons of times, despite the fact some people might be scoffing at that because in every video, I have a fucking mountain of games behind me. But the fact is, is that I've been purchasing and saving and working my ass off since I was fucking 16 to have everything that I own. I didn't have mommy and daddy to buy me shit because I came from a poor Irish fucking family. The fact of the matter is that I buy the shit to support the fucking stores, to support the employees, to support the developers, to support the publishers, even if I fucking hate quite a few of them. The fact is that <laughs> If you don't buy them, then the stuff isn't going to continue to be made, and then you can't bitch at the end of the day why you didn't get a sequel. Because you didn't fucking buy it. You downloaded it. That's the end of the story. Right. People will say, well, that's preaching. Well, you want to know what? You can fucking blow me, and I'm not going to say <laughs> anything, really. I'm just going to fucking let you finish. Yes. Exactly. They can say that. They can fucking talk like Charlie Brown's fucking teacher while they're bobbing my fucking knob. <laughs> and when <laughs> I'm done and they're done, I can be like, are you going to purchase their game? Gulp. I guess I am, Alpha Omega Sin. There you go, fuckbag. Purchase the fucking games. Quit stealing them all the time. And if you want to fucking steal the game to try out, then go buy it. That's absolutely fine. But don't fucking complain the entire time about something that you stole, because that makes no fucking sense. That's like stealing a fucking apple, finding out it was rotten, and going to the store and bitching out fucking customer service. You fucking anal leak. <laughs> 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 Ain't no leak. <laughs> uh, I think we got two rants for the price of one here today. Oh. Yeah, I do apologize. That was supposed to be your. I I do apologize to all the listeners. I didn't mean to. It's just one of those things, you know, like when you start pushing a boulder down a hill and it just keeps rolling. <laughs> yeah, that that's that apparently is my fucking thought process. Uh, I'd say it's the snowball oh, here. Well, shit, everyone else got to hate. I guess I should hate too. I just like to start off this little piece of hate by saying, "Fuck the Sujimotos." Fair <laughs> play. Anyway, hey. no, I, I, I'm in the unusual position of completely agreeing with you, chaps. Um, For the first time it sucks. <laughs> I just wanted to say fuck the Sujimotos, actually. Yeah, but for, <laughs> for the first time since we started this podcast, you actually agree with us. I know. Like, what that's happened? that's untrue. No, that that's true. You, you, it is true. You you never agree with us on the uh, whole heart. Okay, well, can we all agree on just one thing? What? Sure. Fuck the Sujimotos. If, if, <laughs> fuck them. Yeah, sure. There we go. But speaking of which, you know, just going back to this DRM thing, how relevant has it been with gaming? Because most people are getting turned off with this DRM shit. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I can understand well, it if you download... The era of the hardcore gamer is waxing. Yeah. Well, it, it's still... The waning round. Yeah. It's me. still uh, fucking relevant with Ubisoft, because Ubisoft has mandatory violative fucking anal rape DRM on every single goddamn game. Every single one. So if you buy a PC game, you're going to have to deal with that DRM no matter what. If you play Assassin's Creed 1, for, uh, even on Steam, it has to have a constant internet connection. Constant. Even if you're playing, even though the game is not multiplayer, you have to play the single player mode with an internet connection. Even though so, you paid like fucking, I don't know, 25 pound for your fucking internet connection that has to be high speed yeah. just to fucking run the damn thing. Not only that, but what problems does that present down the road? Because what if Ubisoft goes out of business? What if Ubisoft doesn't have servers to connect to anymore? Then you are you not going to be able? To... You can't yeah, play are you it. not going to be able to play that game? Or what the fuck? Here, it, I actually want to. What if everybody one, finds one... out that you're the asshole in the apartment building who's soaking up all the goddamn bandwidth? Yeah. <laughs> there, there's one example I want to give, and it's because it's it's honestly pissed me off the entire time that I've had it. Um, me being a very big fan of beat-em-ups, I love Final Fight, naturally. But the thing is, um, Final Fight on, uh, if I, what is it, Final Fight on PSN. Okay, I went and downloaded it, and you cannot play that game unless you're connected to the internet. Mm -hmm. At all, no. even and the thing is, it's it's a fucking one-player game or a two-player game. Well, why the fuck do I need to be connected to play a fucking beat 'em up? That makes no goddamn sense. What so fucking ever? I downloaded the fucking game in all happiness, like, oh man, Final Fight. Haven't played this in years, and then this. 
this is what I get for my hard-earned money, is a game once a fucking PS3 isn't going to be used anymore, I can't play my fucking game? Well, laddie fucking duh. I'm so happy that they got my money permanently. Meanwhile, I got a game that I can only rent. Exactly. Fucking awesome. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yep. It's the, I, I got exactly the same situation with um, with Crisis. I downloaded Crisis for the P for the PS3 because I played the PC version, loved it. So I thought, well, I'll get it, I'll get the console version so I can still play it because it was on sale. It was on fifty percent off. So I thought, nine pound for a decent fucking PC game on my PS3, win win. My internet connection yeah. came went down, so I thought, well, now I've got it on the system, I'll play it. Turned it on. Says so you need to be signed into PSN to play this game. My internet was down. What the fuck? Yeah. So yeah, oh yeah, no, and that's go that's outside. A <laughs> That's another problem. What, at four in the morning? Yes, please example. refrain from sexual intercourse. Yeah. That's another problem. Like, what What if the Xbox Live is eventually going to go down? How do we know this? Because Xbox Live for the original Xbox games already went down. Yeah. Yep. So, some of these games have it written on the box online multiplayer X number of players. Is that not false advertising at that point? Can you not sue? Is it not because it's blatantly telling you you can do something that you can't at that point? A box is not a legally binding contract. I guess. I guess. I guess. It's fucking bullshit. Yeah, you know, but just you know, just going off from that standpoint, there, the Fan Fantasy Star Online episode one and two on the Xbox, right? It says it's an online game. The only way you could play it, you know, even if you wanted to play it single player, you needed to have an Xbox Live account. You had to have one that was online. And then you had to sign up for, you know, to actually play the game offline. The GameCube version, on the other hand, you put it in, you could play it no matter what. Doesn't matter if you were online, offline, fucking anything, you could just play it. So basically, it just, uh, once Xbox Live died for the original Xbox, it just basically made that game redundant. And beyond all that is the fact that it not only does it make it redundant, but also remember that the 360 isn't backwards compatible with a ton of that stuff. So, yeah, that just adds further insult to injury because people are just like, well, I have to keep my old console. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. Your but old even console so, you keep no the old console right? and it's not going to do anything. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, when it when it comes to that, but it's just a fact it's like, you know, you, you're not really helping your new system really show that it is a true successor when it can't even do everything that the old one does because you won't support it. And when you're paying, what, fucking $50 to have uh, Xbox Live and everything like that, um, why the fuck am I not getting the full, like, experience here? Especially when it's, like, first-party games like Halo 1 and 2. Even if you don't like Halo 1 and 2, there's lots of people out there that do, and they should be allowed to play them. And I still remember when they were taking down the servers for that, there was, like... X amount of people that refused to quit playing and they were online playing for a couple days straight when the servers were supposed to be down. And like the the people at Microsoft thought this was really awesome and like celebrated them doing that. Then once they were done, they still took it down. It's like, yeah, I'm I'm sure that you must have uh, really thought a whole bunch of them when you still took it down like a bunch of fucking asshats. You're a bunch of fucking dicks. Yeah, there was uh, there was one guy. Uh, it was. He managed to stay on 23 days after the actual fucking thing died or something like that. He managed to stay online. He, he kept he kept his account going so he could... He had his mate playing in between the matches. You know, like if he had to go to work and then he'd come back, have a bit of something to eat, then get somebody else to play in his place when he was sleeping. It was pretty <laughs> amazing. Wow. And that's why I miss split screen, folks. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. you didn't need to be online, and I don't give a fuck if somebody's like, I don't like when the, the screen split up in the four. Well, guess what? Big TVs are pretty fucking cheap now. I got a fucking 42-inch TV for like $500, okay? You can go and have that thing in split screen, and it looks just fine. Seriously, play fucking GoldenEye that way. Get drunk with your friends. It's the shit. Grab some titties while you're fucking playing. It's all in good fun. Oh, yeah. The, you know, I always used to love running around his odd job on that. That was fucking funny. Odd job is so cheap, dude, because he, he's short. He, he's <laughs> like you're yeah. shooting up his head. It's like, bastard. what the fuck? I used to love the uh, golden gun match. That was awesome. Oh, I like running around with uh, remote mines. Oh. That was fun. Yeah. That's what blows me away. They're releasing first-person shooters now that have less multiplayer game modes 
than Goldeneye for the Nintendo 64. Like, what the fuck? Oh, Seriously. Dude, I- it, it blows my mind to think because it's just like you have such a big emphasis on like you know co-op and multiplayer but you won't let it happen offline it's like you know how many friends i have that come down and want to play games and it's like did you bring your console and an extra tv and a copy of the game <laughs> oh you didn't well you can't fucking play with me i'm sorry you're just going to watch or here you can have the controller for your turn and then you know you're fucking you're making my stats look horrible when you go online thanks a bunch yeah. And there's just these 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 little things that used to be done in first person shooters that aren't done anymore. You remember Turok? Mm-hmm. You could shoot every single part of a human being's body and it would produce a different reaction when you shot them. If you shot them in the ear, their ear would blow off and gush blood and they'd take forever to fall to the ground and hold their ear and fall down and all that fun shit. There was you shot them in the foot, they reacted totally differently. If yep. you're playing Call of Duty now, there are two reactions. You get shot in the body or you get shot in the head. And that's yeah. it. They're completely lazy. They're completely cutting corners. There's yeah, nothing there. Yeah, but hey, there. that that doesn't matter whatsoever because most of that would only be relevant to the offline experience in the one player campaign. And seriously, who plays that? Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> like nobody yeah. plays that and I'm sure that they know that and they're like it doesn't matter they could seriously have pink hippos flying around in the game nobody would even fucking report that or talk about it until like six months after the game's release and that one fucking bored ass motherfucker who played was like did you notice the pink hippos they're in every fucking stage hey, exactly. that's weird hey, how did anybody notice would find out for like 20 years after the angry video game nerd reviewed it <laughs> yeah. and then everybody yeah. goes and they play and they're like oh wow did not know that. That's kind of <laughs> fucked. I only played online. LOL. Yeah, that's true. Oh no. So, anyways, what is is that it, fellas? Uh, Seems like that's it. I've I've got a little bit more to say to about about it. Oh, but well, he's damn got, it! What do you got? He's gone fresh out of my head. So I think we should move on until I remember, and then I'll just go. Oh, and that thing. One more thing. Then keep going. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't work that way, man, but thank so, you for your enthusiasm. Well, that, that's, Take it away, chaos. That's called the magic of editing. Uh, the yeah. magic of editing, wow. The magic of editing? <gasps> Question mark. <laughs> Speaking What's of religious mouth? censorship, no, um, I had a theory, actually, about uh, Final Fight Alpha. My theory is that maybe that online connectivity, maybe that has to do with that game is actually being treated as a multiplayer experience. Just everybody else you're playing has a really low life bar. Yeah. <laughs> Could be. Could be. That, that's, that's only a theory, mind you. Oh, I, I, I'm more acceptable of that theory than the whole, we're just a bunch of assholes. Yeah. Because that, that's ultimately, <laughs> like, that's the one that I just kept staring in the face and was going to headbutt in the fucking teeth. That would so. be quite funny. <laughs> Am I the only person that thinks that DRM sounds like some sort of a preservative they put in Chinese food? I think it is a preservative that they put in Chinese food. Yeah, well... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> and don't worry, folks. Yes, we are being sarcastic. Sometimes it doesn't translate well, but it is sarcasm. Well... Yeah, if you guys could see us, you'd run for the hill. They, they say sarcasm is the lowest form of wit. Run for your lives? Run. <laughs> uh, okay, we need somebody to start belting it out with uh, some awesome vocal style. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, someone has to do. What are talking about? Run to the hills. Run yeah, run to the hills. Iron Maiden. The Songs hills. of blue in the barren waste. Galloping <laughs> oh, hot on the plain. <laughs> there we go, man. We're we got some Chasing motherfucking the Iron Maiden for you. I actually don't know the lyrics. Of that one. Just do the chorus. Now we're gonna get sued. <laughs> I know, probably. <laughs> Sorry, you need to own the rights to that karaoke. <laughs> I know. See, I was going to do my Getty Lee impression from Rush, and now we can't do that either. Bruce Dickinson, <laughs> you bastard. Let us sing what we want to sing, even I though you wrote it. Bastard. He's still one of the best fucking metal singers ever. I know. I guess I can't do my King Diamond impression, though. Fuck. Do it, do it, do it, do it. All you have to do is scream yeah, really high. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I'm pretty sure everybody's ears died there. Like, the, the piercingness. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what you say? Oh, man, you gotta be more. When you, when you do King Diamond, you gotta be more guttural. You gotta do that. Grandma King! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> now you need to have the fucking upside down crosses painted on your face and everything in the top hat. Who's yes. to say I don't? <laughs> Dude, if you do, I'm gonna be very delighted. You saw <laughs> like, my Halloween special, man. 
just sitting around in fucking King Diamond stuff. I'd be like, <laughs> this is how you do a podcast, folks. <laughs> Justice motherfucking okay, King okay. Diamond. Okay, when we do the live stream, I think I'm going to. I think we should all wear makeup on the live stream. I think okay. during the live stream, I'm going to have a girl I'm giving me head the Megan entire Fox. time. <laughs> uh, hang on, hang on, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Are we doing a live stream? Dude, eventually. Um, well, eventually, eventually, yeah, we we have to do a live stream because it'd be fucking funny. Well, we have to do a live stream. I think we should do a live stream whenever the fuck we can be bothered. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, everybody It'd listening, uh, hang, if all of you would actually tune in to a live stream, please let us know. Because if you will, and the more people that say that they'd be all for it, then uh, we'll definitely start fucking getting that underway. And if somebody could help us with a group fucking live stream where we can use our webcams that would be much appreciated if yeah because could explain uh, to us itunes that'd be even better yeah because we're podcast illiterate and fucking retarded apparently yes <laughs> it's true <laughs> but anyway but anyway just speaking of the whole itunes debacle that we've had with this past couple of weeks Mm-hmm. We have actually found a way to get it up. So, yeah, that, that sounded fucking wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's so <laughs> fantastic. Yes, so great. Right. Yes, we got a until you can upload it video. Yeah, right. it was well, a Bob Dole moment there. I don't know. <laughs> so what we're going to do is that we're going to post a link in the description to the whole iTunes fucking page where you can download our silly little voices and you can listen to us on your silly little... Uh, what's his fucking name? Steve Jobs fucking gadget. So uh, when you couldn't be bothered to actually just import it iPhones. into your iTunes or your oh, iPhone or the Zoom or whatever, just yeah. it'll be there to download as well as the, the standard Zoom. download link, which will actually be as an annotation now, so you guys can share the podcast. There, yeah. I said it. We've done. And you can tell your friends, and you can make us famous. Why? Because that's what you're here for. <laughs> we we don't do this because we enjoy it. We do it for you guys. No, we do, I it, do because... it because it keeps my dick hard. Yeah. Yep. Just like the little blue pill. Just like. <laughs> oh yeah. A, a, one little blue pill? No, I, I'll fucking OD on those bitches. <laughs> Walk around oh, with yeah. a fucking raging boner whenever I go to Walmart and buy some frozen pizzas. <laughs> I'm just no, like, just don't act like your... you're not impressed. Well, it makes you it makes buying donuts <laughs> easier, doesn't it? <laughs> Dude, it watch. would like be trying to get away at that point. <laughs> It'd be like you know, searching for gold. <laughs> no, it, it'll be it'll be funny. You're trying to get out of the store, and the uh, pressure sensitive mat doesn't actually work, and the door shuts on your fucking erectile. <laughs> no, what you do is you drop your erectile onto the pad. It'll open right up. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're fucking polvo into the wall above it. <laughs> So, if anybody out there has a vivid imagination, just imagine a very metal-looking dude beating his wiener off the fucking little sensor pad in front of a doorway going, Open, damn it! Open! (laughs) And you pretty much are going to have uh, probably a fucking nightmare now. Yeah, just whatever you do. I can merchandise that. It could be me, Yell Chaos, the tripod. Yeah, you could could even have an advertising slogan. See Alice for the 48-hour erection. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, what's the next section that we've got? Uh, Uh, I think we're just closing it out. I think that was it. That was it? All right, well. That was it. Yell chaos. Close it out, buddy. Yeah, Take it away. Well, do it. that's going to do it. Well, that's going to do it for us. Uh, We've learned that... uh, iTunes is a shit, Capcom is a shit, EA is a shit, the future is shit, 3D, 3D gaming is shit. So, with that having been said, I'm Yell Chaos, and uh, I'd like to say goodbye to the boys. Alpha? Bye-bye, folks. I heart you. Sainted Magnus? Yeah, bye-bye. Uh, it's like fucking, what time is it? Fucking hell, it's near enough 5 o'clock in the morning on a Thursday night. So, I shall bid you all farewell, and I shall see you in my next videos. Razor Fist! I'm Razor Fist and I am fully engorged. God <laughs> fucking speed. <laughs> oh, God. And I'm uh, Yell Chaos and I can never show this to my parents so they can find out what I do for a living. So, thank you very much. It's been-
Podcast.